like Rogue Mage or something that you think can train you or hard swap to you where you're not going to re really uh, need to be that mobile. Um, so Renewal, definitely a good, like, strong defensive talent choice there. Tiger Greetings. Dash, I think, lost a lot of value when Wild Charge became off global. Tiger Dash was, like, kind of better for, like, pushing it for CC, better for escaping. But since Wild Charge came off global, I would say Tiger Dash has not really been played at all. Moving into these uh, affinities here. All three are actually used pretty frequently. I would say Feral Affinity not really used too often uh, in 3v3. We saw a little bit of a, a taste of it with Gore playing it in this tournament. Uh, generally speaking, though, I would say Feral App not really that good in 3v3. You're not really going to have the opportunity to run in as a Rest of Druid and try and do a bunch of damage as well as uh, go for restells for that stun. But in 2v2, Feral Affinity um, paired with Master Shapeshifter for 25% more damage is a really, really sick combo. Um, and some people may not actually be aware, but something really sick you could do in 2v2 is if you innervate and you go in cat form, for some reason it makes all your abilities cost no energy. So you can just sit here and just spam the most damage. And then with the 25% damage increase in that Feral Affinity, you can literally just go hard as fuck in cat form. Like you just trash people. So honestly, innervate, cat form, Feral Affinity in 2v2 is like insane, insane damage. Uh, so that's actually really sick. But Balance Affinity is probably going to be one of your go-to if you're playing like a CC heavy comp. And Guardian Affinity is going to be your go-to if you're playing more of like a defensive comp where you're not really going for that much CC. Balance Affinity is really, really crucial um, if you're playing a CC comp because that range on clone, it's, uh, it's, it's night and day. You know what I mean? Going for that CC, that five yards. Also, if you're, if you're playing against other druids, like <clears throat> playing against other druids, the druid that has... Uh, Moonkin affinity as opposed to the ones that don't like you can see how far like look at my bash I could bash this guy from right here you know if I wasn't in Boomkin affinity I could bat I can only bash from like right here so if someone's pushing it on you you're gonna get the CC on them before they get the CC on you which maybe allows you to get that clone off which is uh obviously really sick so balance affinity really really good for getting those cyclones out also insanely good for avoiding <clears throat> also insanely good for avoiding things like polymorph um that th you can cast a few abilities in, in form. you can cast cyclone you can cast regrowth you can cast nourish and you can cast overgrowth and you can cast dispel so if you're playing balance affinity versus mage Let's teams do and you want to go for a dispel sometimes okay. mage is trying to be really tricky so what they'll Power. do is they'll sheep your dps and then as you're dispelling it they're already casting the sheep on you you might have been in bear form but since you come out for that dispel you know you think they're just going to re-sheep your dps they're just going to sheep you so if you go on boom can affinity first and then you hit that dispel you're going to be the sheep you're going to to uh, be in form while spamming clones like sometimes when you're spamming clones like mages try and get sheeps on you so you being in this boomkin affinity allows you to go for those clones like a lot more aggressively uh just keep in mind that you are going to be potentially a swap target but yeah balance affinity is really really good to uh kind of avoid sheeps it's almost really important so i would say try and use it versus every single mage comp if possible if they're going you really hard you might need to switch to, switch to the guardian affinity uh, but only play the balance affinity if you're kind of like doing like mage druidy kind of things. Like, for example, if I was playing Rest of Druid, Windwalker DK, most likely I wouldn't play balance affinity, uh, balance affinity uh, into rogue mage because I probably wouldn't even play Cyclone in that comp. You know, I would just kind of let the Windwalker DK do their thing. Um, and then Guardian Affinity, you know, it's it's really self-explanatory. You go on bear form. You have, uh, you know, your little abilities, Thrash and Mangle. And then you also have Frenzy Regen, which is actually going to help you a ton. And then on top of that, you take the 6% reduced damage. So you can definitely choose between these affinities uh, pretty wisely, just depending on the situation. You know, Balance Affinity mainly for CC. Feral Affinity mainly for damage. Guardian Affinity mainly, uh, mainly for surviving, just to break down pretty easily. <clears throat> so Mighty Bash, going to be your go-to here in the uh, 60 talent choices. Um, obviously a really great stun allows you to set up CC like polymorph and cyclone, maybe get away from people. You can root people off it too. The only time I catch myself ever playing mass entangle is if I'm fighting a melee cleave, that's like just kind of training me and I, I don't have a mage on my team or something because if I had a mage, they have their own roots, but you could play mass entangle as well as, uh, encroaching vines. And this was kind of a neat little combo that you played last expansion to survive against melee cleaves as rest of druid. You double root both melee with a uh you know an instant root and then after that root gets broken they're doing 25 percent less physical damage for four seconds so you root them for eight seconds and they come out and they're doing less damage it's it's win-win so that's a great combo versus double melee if you're a rest of druid and you're getting trained by melee uh you can try and play mass entanglement with the uh the encroaching vines could help you out a lot definitely worth giving it a try now level 75 this is something that people ask me all the time you know why don't you play this why don't you play that soul the forest is the best talent 
I swear you shouldn't play anything else. I'm convinced you should not play anything else. <clears throat> Just for example here. Here's a regular Rejuve. Okay. 2300. Here's a Soul Forest Rejuve. 7k. It heals for so much more. People always ask me, you know, like, man, Sidhu, I, I feel like I'm not doing enough healing on my Druid. Make sure you're getting those Soul of Forest Hots up, man. They are so, so, so powerful. It is it is make or break, man. If you're trying to do big burst healing, dude, a Swift Man into a Regrowth, that Regrowth is going to do an absolute ton of healing. Uh, so Soul of Forest Reju, Soul of Forest Regrowth is definitely going to be the, uh, the most insane amount of healing you can put out. Uh, literally in some situations, <clears throat> you come out of CC, you can you could just do the craziest healing ever. Like you come out of CC, you Swift Men into Rejuve, and then you Swift Men into Rejuve, and these hots are insane. Then you regrowth after that. Like look at these hots, 8K every 2.5, 8K every 2.5. Like it, it's it's just crazy, crazy, crazy healing. Uh, that's also why Prosperity is really good for that double soul. I need to but, yeah. target something so, first. I would never recommend playing Cultivation. I think it's bad. I would never recommend playing uh, Incarnation. I think it's bad. I think Soul of the Forest is always the go-to. I think Soul of Farce is always the go-to. <clears throat> um, so 90 row inner piece is not going to be used in PvP. Stone Bark's generally the uh, the best choice of your talents here. 45 second Iron Bark, incredibly powerful. Obviously, a cooldown you could throw out, you know, frequently to reduce damage and increase healing. Super, super nice. Uh, I would say that Stone Bark's going to be almost your always go-to. The only um, the only exception is if you're playing a comp where you feel like you're kind of standing still, aka uh, maybe you're getting trained and you're not fighting, your or maybe heads. you have a Destro Warlock on your team. Spring Blossom can actually be really powerful. Um, Spring, Bo away! Spring Blossom can actually be really powerful because what Spring Blossom is going to do is if you have enough mastery, you got to make sure you have enough mastery. I would say you probably want like 18 to 20 percent. Right now, I don't even have enough for it to be worth no. it. But on tournament, no! I have 20% mastery. Oh, um, smart! On tournament, I have 20% mastery. If you put a shroom down and you have 20% mastery, Spring Blossom counts. Uh, Spring Blossom counts as, ma as as a hot for your mastery. The regular shroom Radio doesn't, but Spring Blossom throw! makes it happen. So if you have 20% mastery I didn't and you have this him. Spring Blossom Not ticking, I've got that you means loves. that the 20% extra healing you would be getting from Stone Bark is now up 100% of the time. Okay. This shroom right here is increasing your healing by 20%. 20% increased healing from the shroom if you're playing Spring Blossom. Yeah. This is actually a really sick talent. So the way you look at it is Stone Bark essentially only reduces the cooldown of Iron Bark by 15 seconds. And this is increasing your healing by 20% all the time. So Spring Blossom is actually a pretty decent talent. It's not bad. You got to be playing a comp that is kind of immobile, like I, I said. You want a Destro Warlock or maybe a Shadow Priest standing still the whole time. <clears throat> you get less access to that Stone Bark, but Spring Blossom is just going to give you the most possible healing. So, two not bad talents there. Definitely something to uh, mess around with. Uh, photosynthesis is something that a lot of people, you know, have talked to me about. I don't really ever try it. I don't think it's good enough. I think it's good in Mythic Plus and PV and stuff, but I think Germination is way too, way too powerful. Uh, I feel like if you don't play Germination, you lose a lot of uh, you lose a lot of value on Solo Forest because sometimes you do have to like Swift Man into Rejuve into Swift Man, and then if you can't put up the second Rejuve and you can't get a regrowth out, it just kind of feels like you're wasting that Solo Forest proc. I don't feel like Photosynthesis is good enough. Uh, you're more than welcome to try it. A lot of people may disagree with me, um, but personally, I feel like Germination is just way too good. Uh, you know, it gives you that extra healing on your mastery if you have a lot of mastery, which I hope you do. Uh, you know, that's going to increase your healing by a lot as well. I think this uh, Germination is definitely the, the go-to talent. So, uh, Honor Talents, you play Trinket almost all the time as, uh, as Rest of Druid. I'll play Gladiator's Medallion versus teams that um, can CC a lot. Like, I kind of like, or excuse me, I kind of like Relentless versus, like, Shadow Priest teams, especially, like, Shadow Priest Mage. I like Relentless versus, like, Mage Druid teams without a Rogue because if you get Blinder versus Rogue, you lose the game immediately. Uh, other than that, like Relentless for Shadow Priest, Relentless for Mages without Rogues, like maybe like uh, Mage Hunter, I, that's probably not even a comp, I don't know. Uh, but Relentless is not really, it's not really used too often. So generally Trinket, um, generally Trinket, you know, Mages without Rogues, but who does that? Uh, for example, there was Ellie Mage in the tournament. I don't even think I would play Relentless versus Ellie Mage because the way that breaks down is like you're not really going to get CC'd often enough. Like that's not a CC heavy comp. 
it's like they're going to win maybe with a random lightning lasso, which you might need a trinket. I, I don't know. So I would say Gladiator's Medallion uh, is pretty good a lot of the times. Mage Windwalker. I would actually probably play Relentless. Eh, maybe I wouldn't play Relentless versus Mage Windwalker. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe just Relentless versus Shadow Priest right now. Not 100% sure. But yeah, I, I generally play Medallion a lot. <clears throat> so I'm going to talk about just very quickly two's talents because... I want, I want to say always use Focus Growth, but I almost never use Focus Growth in 2s, honestly. 2s talents, I generally play Feral Aff, and then versus Melee, I play Thorns, and then I also play Master Shapeshifter, and I also play Cyclone. But I'm kind of like a spaz in 2s. Like, I don't really try that hard. Like, if you're, if you're trying really hard in 2s, you should probably play Focus Growth for as much healing as possible. Thorns versus any melee team in 2s. Thorns is too good to not play in 2s. Um, if you're playing a comp where you don't feel like you're CCing much, you're just going to win with like damage, like you have a Windwalker or maybe a Death Knight or something. Honestly, even clones probably go with a Windwalker. You could play Nourish. Nourish is an unbelievable amount of healing. It's so, so, so crazy. Um, probably your most efficient spell in terms of healing. Um, so it really depends. Like these, these talents are so tricky because you have so many good ones, right? Like Last Master Shapeshifter is really good with Feral Affinity. Overgrow is really good to get hots up for a swap. Uh, and then you have offline. Focus Growth, Nourish, Cyclone, Thorns. Like so many really, really good talents. So um, Focus Growth, in my opinion, is the best for instant healing. Nourish is the best for casted healing. So if you um, Shutting down. I probably like, let's just say you're playing Destro Lock, Resto Druid, all right, and you're fighting Warrior Shaman. I would probably play Thorns, Focus Growth, Nourish. That's probably what I would play. I probably wouldn't play Feral Affinity, most likely. I'd probably maybe I would play Feral Affinity, but I wouldn't play Master Shapeshifter. Just re if you can, but most healing possible. Uh, it's uh, it's it's really hard to say. These talents are there's so many good ones. There's so many good ones. So you could fool around with those a little bit yourself, but focus growth is obviously really insane healing, really efficient. Nourish, really insane healing, really efficient. Depends if you want to get clones or not. Thorns versus melee, 100%. Um, you don't really need overgrowth in twos for the most part. I wouldn't recommend overgrowth in twos. Um, overgrowth in this slot, these are generally the, the talents I play in threes. Focus growth, overgrowth, cyclone. Foc uh, overgrowth is just something that is really powerful for applying all those hots. It's actually pretty cheap. They recently reduced the mana cost. So you're getting two rejuves, a wild growth, and a regrowth, a regrowth uh, for 6k mana. And if you look at the mana cost of those abilities, it's actually uh, a pretty good deal. So reju is 2100. You get one reju. That's 2100. One regrowth. It's not really 2800 mana because you're losing out on the, uh, the big heal. So maybe just cut that in half. So it's about like 1400 mana worth. And then the life blooms 2200. Then wild growth. You know, that's a ton of mana. So all those hots up for for uh, 6k mana is actually pretty efficient. So Overgrowth, I really like versus every single mage team, no matter what, because they have Kleptomania, they steal all, all your hots, you wanna put all those hots up back as soon as possible. So Overgrowth, really good into every single mage team, in my opinion, personally. Uh, focus Growth, I use every single game in threes, I think it's too much healing to not use. So generally, these are the three talents, Focus Growth, Overgrowth in this slot, and then Cyclone. If you're playing with a mage, you always want Cyclone on your team. If you're playing like a melee cleave comp where maybe you're playing like turbo or you're playing windwalker dk or something where you feel like you can't cc dropping cyclones fine you just got to understand your win condition is your win condition trying to cc or is your win condition um is your win condition just trying to outlive and dampen if your win condition is to try and outlive and dampen which generally is windwalker dk that is the situation i don't really play clone but you can try and sneak it in sometimes if you're fighting stuff where you feel like you can get it for example, I was playing Restodruid, Windwalker, DK the other day versus uh, Destro, Warlock, Windwalker, Restodruid. And I was just playing Focus Growth, Overgrowth, Cyclone. Because I didn't really think, like, Thorns isn't really that great into Windwalkers because they could swap so easily. Um, I don't think Revitalize is that good. I already had Overgrowth. I could have maybe played Nourish instead of Cyclone. But Cyclone was just good there. Like, I would just clone the DPS they weren't killing and leg sweeps. And sometimes I'd push in for a Bash clone to get the kill. So I would just fool around uh, with Cyclone have a on your own. Like, it. If you play a game where you're not Cyclone and you're like, man, it was really hard to finish that game, try Cyclone out a game. You know, see if you can actually maybe sneak those Cyclones in and dampening and uh, maybe get some wins. But you don't need to be clone heavy. You know what I mean? You don't need to try and like bait interrupts the whole game like Mage Drew where it's like, OK, I, I want to go for clone soon. Like I'm going to try and get this interrupt out of the way. Just sneak in with the bash every once in a while. Try and position yourself where you can't get interrupted and then just go for those clones. Um, Nourish is something that is going to be probably one of your biggest heals, your most efficient spell. Uh, it's something that's really difficult to get off. If you're ever going to get trained, I would not recommend using Nourish. 
Uh, but if you're playing with like a mage or something and your mage is getting trained, or if you're playing against melee cleaves and your DPS is getting trained, use Nourish every single time. If you're ever playing a spell cleave, you should probably be playing Nourish because a lot of the kicks are not going to be used on you. Um, so Nourish is an unbelievably powerful spell. It puts a hot up uh, every single time you uh, use it. And then if you already have all the hots up, it critically heals. Like it, the, the amount of healing on this ability is unbelievable. Definitely worth using. Um, you just have to rec recognize like when you can get it off. For example, Nourish is really bad into Rogue Mage. You know, you don't have the opportunity to cast Nourish. Like versus, versus Rogue Mage, you know, they could swap you. You know, the CS, if you get CS Klepto, you probably just lose the game. But, you know, for example, if you're fighting against Windwalker DK and you have something on your team, uh, you're not really getting attacked and your DPS is getting plastered, you're sitting in the backfield. Nourish, Nourish, Nourish. Your DPS is not going to die if you're spamming those nourishes. Um, it's it, it's just way too powerful. Mark of the Wild is uh, really really good into specific teams. So Nature, Fire, Frost, uh, Dot, and AOE all reduced. So I don't think people actually understand the power of Mark of the Wild. So Mark of the Wild versus Frost Mages, Frozen Orb, Blizzard, Comet Storm. That's AOE. Ice Nova. That's AOE. Those are two of their biggest burst abilities reduced by fifteen percent. Chat. Think about that. Orb, Ice Nova, Comet Storm, Blizzard, all reduced by 15%. And now I, I haven't 100% tested this, but Ray of Frost, that's a dot. You channel that. That's a dot. Drain Life, that's considered a dot. So Ray of Frost reduced by 15%. That's insane. Mark of the Wild's insane versus Frost Mages, okay? So, for example, if you're playing against Ellie Frost Mage, which Gore was playing against ah, this weekend. I don't know if he's playing against the Wild. Meat. Flame Shock. That's a... Uh, that's a fire dot. Then you have Stormkeeper if they use Chain Lightning. That's uh, nature damage, which is AoE, which would be 15% reduced. And now, do you yeah, feel that chill lasso. running up your spine? Lightning Lasso, in my the mind, fog is, is rolling in. Ability, just like all the other channels. Lightning Lasso, nature dot, reduced by 15%. Mark of the Wild, incredible versus Elemental Shamans, incredible versus Frost Mages, pretty good versus Fire Mages. You know, they do the Meteor, they have the Ignite. Uh, not bad abilities. If you want to try and reduce damage by a little bit more, Mark of the Wild is not bad. Earthquake, yep, Earthquake. It's pretty good. Also really, really good against uh, Boomkin. Also really good I against Boomkin. I can smell um, your fear. Nature. They have uh, Sunfire, which is fire. They have uh, Moonfire, which is arcane, which is damaged over time. And then uh, if they ever use that other AOV Starfall, yeah, which they don't really use often, but yeah. So, Mark of the Wild, definitely really, really solid for specific things. Um, you can rebuff in all forms, which is really nice. And Thorns, you definitely want to try and use versus melee teams if you can. It's just, it's so... I powerful. will rip your heart from your these chest. days, in my opinion, is to, like, to like counter pressure or to also, like, deter people from attacking. So, if, for example, let's just say I'm playing a comp where... I'm fighting against a melee team, right? And they're absolutely smashing my DPS. I throw thorns up, and then you they gotta think twice if they wanna attack that DPS. That's another way to do thorns is. Until it sometimes melee leaves like to swap on triple blow, you know? It's like, you know, I'm healing Sam and I'm healing Trill. It's like, yo, uh, or I'm healing Sam and I'm healing. I'm healing Trill and I'm healing Mez. I'm healing a melee cleave. I don't know. I don't know how to talk. Mez has triple bloom. Then they go Trill. Trill has triple bloom. Then they go Mez. They try and swap a lot. Sometimes what I'll do is. Mez will have my triple bloom, and then they swap to Trill. I'll throw thorns on Trill. I'll make them think twice about swapping. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, man, do you attack into the triple bloom, or do you attack into the thorns, you know? So thorns is obviously really powerful in that regard to kind of deter people from attacking. Um, also puts a slow up, which is not bad, and does a lot of damage, which is not bad. So definitely a lot of really, really good talent. So, you know, if you're playing against a melee cleave, you could play thorns, nourish, focus growth, you know? You don't need the cyclone, or you could play uh, I need focus to growth, something first. nourish no thorns. It, it's hard to say, man. There, there's a lot of really, really good talents. Revitalize feels like it's a little behind. Revitalize has decent. Uh, Revitalize. Has